Hello everyone, this is Fawad. Welcome to Future on Cloud. This is the continuity of NSXT from scratch video series. In today's video, I am going to cover step 7, 8 and 9 that is create transport zone, uplink profile and host transport node profile. Or transport zone. A transport zone define a collection of transport nodes that can communicate with each other across a physical infrastructure one or more. Transport node can participate in the following transport zone, overlay and VLAN. Currently we are only covering overlay. VLAN will be covered in upcoming videos when we will start configuration of NSX. Overlay used as an internal tunnel between the transport nodes carries in even encapsulation traffic. How the tunnel is being built? This is how it looks like. Tunnel encapsulates the virtual network traffic traffic data and carry it over to the physical network and SXT data center use Geneve to encapsulate the data traffic tunnel setup between the tunnel endpoints tunnel endpoints mean the physical host using the physical network VM frames are virtual machines VM virtual machine frames are encapsulated with Geneve tunnel headers and sent across the tunnel so this is the process or steps how the VM traffic will move forward so VM initiator traffic this step one is to the tap interface then it leaves the physical roads using the physical infrastructure then it fish to the transport node or physical host P then tunnel endpoint it encapsulate the traffic and send it to the destination VM And the transport zone define a span of traffic of logical network over a physical infrastructure. It define a potential reach of transport nodes. Transport zone can communicate either overlay or VLAN traffic. As I mentioned earlier, VLAN will be configured in upcoming videos. Just for sake of reference, a VLAN transport zone are used to communicate between NSX edge uplinks and upstream physical router to establish north-south connectivity. Important factor uplink profile. An uplink profile define how NVDS or VDS map to physical NICs of the host connected to the physical network. Uplink profile contain uh, the physical properties. An uplink profile contain the properties that you want your network adapter to have. In policy, active standby uplinks, transport VLAN ID, and MTU. I will show you how you can configure these things. This is teaming policy. A teaming policy is a part of uplink profile configuration which define the uplink redundancy and failover model. A teaming policy apply on each NVDS or VDS uplink which include physical links. You can see here the there are three methods which you can adopt failover and failover one will remain active another will be on standby load balancing the three methods so you can choose any transport node profile what is transport node profile Transport node profile captures the configuration required to create a transport node. Whatever we have configured in uplink profile and transport node profile that we combine in the uplink pro and then transport node profile and apply on main advantage of having the transport node profile is in future if you wanted to expand your network and you wanted to add more hosts you just need to apply this profile on those particular hosts and you are good to go you don't need to configure anything from scratch you just need to apply this profile NSXT data center required a transport node to perform networking and the security function a transport node is responsible for forwarding the data plane traffic that originates from the VM. Supported. 
version which for the physical connectivity of transport node you can select any of these option use a dedicated physical link for management <coughs> and transport transport for overlay or vlan traffic or you can share the nics for both management and transport These are the IP poles which you have to configure in order to deploy the tap. There are some prerequisites for transport node profile like the ASXI host what you are planning to configure an, an, in an NSXT data center are part of vCenter server instance. The hosts are added in vSphere cluster. The transport zone is configured. The IP address pole we already configured. vCenter server instance is added in NSX manager. So once everything is configured, you can verify the status using NSX version and the node status. And you can also see the tap IP addresses once. There is another way to verify the configuration as when NSX data center kernel module are is packaged in VIP files and downloaded to the host. Kernel module provides services such as distributed routing, distributing firewalling, and so on. After ESXi hosts paid <coughs> for NSXT data center, VIPs are installed on host to participate in networking and security. So, in order to verify <coughs> that host is prepared for NSXT, you just need to log in on host using SSH. And you can run this command ESX CLI software web list pipe sign grab NSX and you will see these packages are installed on a physical. So let's jump into the actual lab environment. So this is my compute resources. So let's take them out from maintenance mode. And we can start the deployment. I wanted to show you one thing if you will get the configuration of host one in VM kernel adapter right now app interfaces are not here so as we configured this host for NSXT you will see the app interfaces will start reflecting here so let's jump into NSXT go to the system app break compute manager as I have already added the vCenter server as I have shown in the last video and I also have configured the IP pro uh, IP address pools for tap edge and tap host so let me check what is the VLAN for tap I believe it should be 10 20 yes VLAN 20 is configured for tap host click on transport zone Add transport zone. So currently we are only dealing with play. Earlier we will just talk about transport zone in upcoming video when we start deployment. Of. I have created one transport zone TZ overlay, and I have to specify a uplink profile. First uplink profile. For reference, I will mention 20. I wanted to use them as a load balance. Okay, I am going to use U1, and these are basically interface name which I am going to use. I can type on FOC2. Just for understanding, I'm typing uplink one, uplink two, uplink three, and uplink four. And the VLAN which we have interface that is 20. Post uplink profile. 
it, the next step is the transport node profile. And is equal to transport node file. This the existing one. And D switch. Let me show you the switch. This is the switch which is transport node, the transport node. File which we have just heard now, and I will use IP pool which I have prepared in the last video. The tap host uplink one, these are the physical interfaces, and uplink u1, u2 are the name which I just assigned in uplink profile. Most three and most four. Okay, the MTU must be more than 1500, right? So let's have a look what is the MTU size of our switch. So it is 1500, so it should be more than 1500. So let's change it to Now we are able to configure that one. Let's apply this profile now. As I have already added Compute Manager, so that is the reason I am able to see my resources. So, I mentioned earlier, once you configure your transport zone profile, you can add multiple hosts within this cluster and apply this profile whenever you want so let's apply all together on both hosts and figure nsx it should be able to apply on both at the same time. Yeah. Compute to configure NSX. Select transport node profile. This is the profile which we just configured. And it will start in a while. So meanwhile let me show you how we can verify. Let me turn on SSH. So SSH is running now 10.2.1. Let me log into this 10. SX CLI software with list and see it is not showing any result now so let's wait until it the packages then we we should be able It'll take a couple of seconds. So let me pause the video. So I'll resume it back once the installation completed. It's still going on 48% now. Eight percent now. So I just wanted to show you. 
see here ah, right now the just nsx general endpoints start reflecting so earlier it was not here both compute resources endpoints as you can see here the nsx version it is installed successfully nsx configuration success and the tunnel status will be up shortly it will take a while meanwhile let me show you the grab files as well so here we have checked it was not showing any results so let's check it again You can see here as we apply the profile on the host it start deploying the web VMware information bundles on the physical host that will be used for this is how we can prepare our load profile it will take a while to change the status so let me let me wait for a couple of minutes. So once the status is green, then we are good to go. Yeah. So as you can see, the status is up now. Apps are configured. And these are the IP addresses assigned. So this is it for now. Stay tuned. Keep watching. See you in next video where I'm going to start the installation of NSX VM and then we will configure. Stay tuned. Keep watching. See you in next video.